Hello, Marcin. How's life in Poland? Hello, it's great. Good afternoon, everyone. So we are waiting for our presentation. Uh, so we are both experts in the Navigado program and we are very honored to be able to talk to you and share with you our vision of uh, recommendations and conclusions related to the project. I think that we can start now. OK, good luck. <clears throat> Thank you. So the first thing that we need to uh, take into consideration when thinking about going into active learning and using innovative, flexible learning spaces is thinking about the our traditional um, school as set of boxes and uh, there is a box connected with time. So our lesson, which is usually about 45, 50 um, minutes long and sometimes it prevents us from using uh, formats like project based work. And then we've got the uh, space box, which is usually uh, constricted to our classroom walls. And again, we may think about going beyond this box, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. And then we've got another box, which is related to the age of our students, just like Sir Ken Robinson said, that our students are divided and graded based on their year of manufacturing, uh, which also uh, can be uh, remediated if we think about active learning and going beyond the walls of our uh, classes and uh, joining students, inviting them, uh, inviting our colleagues for uh, team teaching and joining older and younger students to work on projects together. And also uh, the, the last box that I'm going to talk about is related to our classroom setting. And uh, when we think about typical classroom, we usually think about rows of uh, desks, students' desks, uh, which resemble more or less the setting which uh, was used in schools a hundred years ago. But because we've got uh, very different challenges than than a year uh, than a hundred years ago, we need to think about going beyond all those boxes. And then when you free your mind uh, and understand that each of those boxes can be breached and can be expanded and extended. Uh, you understand then that even if your uh, class time is very short, you can expand it by taking some of the project work into uh, the setting between the classes where students can cooperate using some kind of digital platform. If your classroom size is restricted, you can think about just as Barbara said, going outside of your classroom and using open spaces in your school, like corridors, courtyards, gardens, even some city or urban spaces which are located uh, next to you, your school. And uh, when it comes to classroom settings, you will find plenty of examples of ideas of how you can change the typical traditional classroom setting uh, into more um, setting which promotes uh, active learning. You can find them, uh, those ideas in the guidelines. So in the outcome of the Novigado project that Bart is going to talk about in a minute. Uh, when thinking about uh, changing our traditional uh, methods of teaching into using flexible learning environments, uh, we need to start with pedagogy, just like Barbara said, but also what Adil uh, expanded upon is that we can use technology and uh, use it in a meaningful way. And of course, uh, architecture, which suits our new mode of uh, teaching and students' mode of learning uh, will be beneficial 
uh, in terms of providing them of uh, with this atmosphere of being in a setting which is different from the traditional one. And it's also important because students are very often used to traditional methods and changing their mindset is also requires some time, effort and perseverance. Now, when we think about the stages in the process of adjusting to flexible learning spaces, uh, Xavier showed us this six step process. Uh, I'm just going to put it down to three very important things for me personally as a teacher um, the first thing that i need to do is to have the awareness that uh, the new methods innovative uh, methods are really important and they can give us the added value of uh, deeper learning and uh, information when, which can be used by our students in innovative ways thanks to the fact that they it's learned uh, in an active way and then when my mindset changes I start experimenting and of course it requires my growth mindset so a trial and error approach sometimes not giving up easily when your first lesson doesn't work out it doesn't mean uh, that you you can just give up. You need to get used to it. Your students get uh, need to get used to it. And then the final um, uh, stage is the stage of coherence, where you understand which methods can be used with which students, uh, because there is no universal solution, and you need to have this toolbox. Uh, which you can open and you can choose the tool which applies to the situation, to the content which you are going to teach and your students are going to learn and you are going to choose the uh, setting, the classroom setting or the place where you are going to uh, teach this lesson. And uh, the last thing which I'm going to talk about in this first uh, uh, my first uh, part of the presentation is that uh, there are three things which were already mentioned, but they um, deserve to be mentioned and stressed. It, the first thing that you need to do is to change your mindset about things which are possible and impossible. And after remote education, we already know that things that were deemed impossible totally, they really are possible uh, given the circumstances in which we needed to shift from traditional stationary school into remote classes in a month, a few weeks. So after that experience, I really think that anything is possible. And this mindset provides me with the opportunity of trying things out. And then you need to have the skill set on which we worked uh, in the Novigado project and you've got the guidelines document or a book uh, which you can read to uh, get the skills necessary to use active methods and to give your students all the skills necessary to be able to become active learners and the last thing is the tool set which can be divided into you as a teacher knowing how to use technology uh, you as a teacher knowing how to uh, make use of all the furniture and equipment which you have at your disposal, but also the tools which we created for you uh, as part of the Novigado project results. And Bart is now going to talk about that. Thank you. <clears throat> now, before uh, diving into uh, all the products and the resources that we created uh, for this project, I would like to go back uh, 10 years uh, to 2012. And as uh, many of you will know, at that time we uh, had uh, the opening of the Future Classroom Lab. We had quite a lot of visitors in the first months, people coming from the academic world, policy makers, and of course also schools. And I must say we had quite a lot of fans from the very moment uh, when uh, people entered our space. And they said this is something uh, for the best for the students. Uh, this is an environment in which they will benefit. Uh, this is a space where they can grow, explore. It's a bit like a, a kindergarten for older 
kids and uh, they went back to their schools uh, with uh, lots of enthusiasm. But then we got um, some messages like, uh, we have some money to spend. Where can I buy a future classroom? Or in most cases, money. we are a bit uh, frustrated. We also want that technology and that new space environment. And in other cases, uh, some um, schools or institutes went even further. They said we built a new space but how to use it. So that was a challenge that we faced to uh, work on our narrative, but also to work on the support of teachers. And there is no handbook of uh, how to use Civ learning. We can guide, we can uh, inspire, and uh, we can promote sharing, which is quite uh, important uh, so that the, the community of teachers and, and schools in general support each other with the lessons learned. And the same thing we saw happening in other countries where uh, similar initiatives were taken, like um, European Schoolnet. And so we were very happy that we could uh, organize a project with funding uh, given by, by European Commission. And uh, so then the Novigado project was born, which um, had the, uh, let's say, the goals uh, that you can see here now to guide, to inspire, and to promote the sharing of. Uh, resources and uh, build a, a community and this is what we have uh, tried now um, i don't have the time to go to all the resources and all the elements and all the de details but i provide uh, the links so you can go there and uh, the main link where you can find uh, access to the resources fcl.eon.org novigado and there you find uh, what gated so far uh, one important thing that I already mentioned is that uh, we try to build a community and we hope that the, this community will continue after the finishing of the project. Uh, you see the link here where we created uh, the blog, which uh, will uh, have a few more, more uh, entries coming up. Uh, over the past years, uh, we have also created quite a lot of events and webinars. They are still accessible. Uh, they are. Uh, recorded so if you want to learn more about it uh, please uh, try to find them on our website and it could be uh, inspiration for you uh, to find uh, out uh, what uh, we have uh, come up with now this one is really something very solid and uh, i think we are all very proud of it uh, in the in the project these are the guidelines that uh, we created guidelines in learning space innovations and in this uh, downloadable uh, uh, brochure or document, which uh, is uh, not only in English, but also in the languages of our project partners, you will understand more about uh, the concept of uh, active learning. But what I think is even more important, you will have quite a lot of uh, practical tips and tricks. And you find the link there to download uh, this document. And it has been uh, downloaded uh, quite a lot of times. Uh, Elena will know how many times, but still, I think this is really not the ultimate handbook for active learning, but still it uh, takes a, a nice step in in the good direction. So this is something that uh, we are all proud of um, of the project. What else did we do uh, connected to that uh, uh, handbook, uh, which might be theoretical? Uh, we and, and also practical, as I said, in, in, but uh, I mean, uh, this one uh, really goes to the reality of uh, what's happening in Europe. Uh, we also have connected three case studies of innovative schools who implement the ideas of active learning. And also uh, there you will find links to those uh, 13 case studies spread all over Europe that could also be uh, for in, for in uh, inspiration for you. So that is uh, one uh, element already of our work, uh, these uh, guidelines. And uh, as a kind of annex, uh, we have uh, uh, produced uh, 13 case studies. Now, uh, connected to this, we already started uh, a while ago uh, at European Schoolnet with um, bringing together uh, a map of uh, innovative schools that uh, were inspired by European Schoolnet and also by others, because of course we did not invent the concept as such. Uh, and this is also something that uh, could be of interest for you, that you uh, have a look at those um, 
learning labs uh, uh, overview, which go further than those 13 that I just mentioned. But this one is really uh, one of our favorite babies as well. Uh, you know, with babies, uh, sometimes they are not perfect, uh, but uh, we are all very proud of it uh, as well. This is a scenario tool that is open to anyone. If you take an, uh, an free account, you can uh, use this tool to create uh, your active learning lessons that you can implement in your own context. And uh, the innovative thing about it is it's not an empty tool. We guide the users to come up with the lesson plans and scenarios that uh, have the spirit of active learning. We have uh, also ready made uh, building bricks inside with, with smaller activities that you can modify, that you, uh, you can uh, bring in the right order. Of course, you can make your own activities as well as I said. Uh, but there is some guidance and we are also starting with uh, implementing uh, or, or integrating some full uh, scenarios inside it. We still need to fill the tool with more uh, elements, but as it is, uh, it is already nice to use. And please also uh, go to the support tab. You don't uh, need an account to go there, but if you go to the, the link that I just gave you there and you go to the support tab, you will find some uh, videos that you can uh, watch first and then you will in understand, especially the first one, uh, what uh, the tool is capable of. So that is, uh, I think, an overview of what uh, we have created um, so far in the project. OK, it, it's ending, uh, but um, there might be some uh, more elements coming from uh, the block and also this tool, as I said, will be filled with more uh, features. Then. Uh, also, during the period of the Navigada project, we organized a MOOC uh, with the title Active Learning and Innovative Teaching Flexible Learning Spaces. As you can see uh, under the title, it's an archived course, but like all the courses of uh, the European Schoolnet Academy, you can still uh, go there and uh, find all the content. There is no active moderation anymore, but all the content is still there. So I think this is also for some people interesting to uh, to go there and see what the type of learning you can take uh, from that uh, MOOC that we uh, had a few months ago. Uh, I think it, it's quite nice what we had. Uh, you know, I started with that mission. We need to guide, uh, we need to uh, inspire, but the uh, most important thing is that we need to bring people together and uh, promote uh, sharing of uh, resources. So I think that was my uh, part of the presentation, so I will uh, click on uh, to the next one and give the floor back to uh, my colleague uh, Martin. Uh, Martin, you're muted. Thank you, Bart. Uh, so the final outcome of the Novigado project is a set of recommendations included in the final report, and the recommendations are divided into four categories. So we've got uh, recommendations for teachers, for schools, policymakers, and teacher development institutions. As far as the recommendations for teachers, first of all, you have to start from thinking about the common open spaces at your school that could be used for learning, go beyond the box, then include active learning activities in your yearly plan of action. So make it something consistent and sustainable and uh, do not try to uh, employ active learning just as a show uh, from time to time once a month. So it's very important to be consistent. And then uh, provide a classroom atmosphere which promotes trial and error approach, uh, support growth mindset, and uh, support those cycles of planning, implementation, and then reflection of what worked and what did not work. Uh, it was already mentioned, but it's important to transition from a teacher centered approach towards student centered approach. So teacher is no longer the sage on the stage, uh, but a guide on the side. And it's also important to give yourself and your students time and grace 
to get accustomed to active methods. Uh, and then uh, it should work for teachers. And then as far as for schools, um, first of all, if you need to start, if you are going to start a process of transitioning into uh, active learning, promoting active learning and flexible learning spaces and innovative teaching, uh, in, make sure to invite uh, students, teachers, students, parents, uh, school authorities, inspectors, just like Xavier uh, told us in his case, uh, into the process of designing and redesigning learning spaces. Ask your students what is good for them. Uh, ask the teachers what is good for them. Do not try to push the uh, approach from up to the bottom, but rather think about the bottom up approach where the changes are suggested uh, by the grassroots movement. Uh, when purchasing new equipment furniture, uh, we are tempted, very often tempted to use uh, the cheapest uh, things possible. Remember, they have to be heavy duty products, good quality. Uh, it's much better value for money because it will not be broken in two or three years, but it will last more. Uh, a very important position is the position of the head teacher, a principal, which should be the leader of changes. And uh, he or she should understand that if there is the noise in the classroom, it's not because the teacher does not control anything what's going on in the classroom, but it might be uh, a sign of learning. So it's important to have enlightened teach, uh, head teachers. As far as policymakers, uh, it's important to expressly include the forces or as Adil said, seven C's of education and growth mindset into the common core curricula. And it should be something more than just recommendations because nowadays we've got those key competences in European unions which are recommended, but still uh, for some uh, schools and teachers, uh, those recommendations are not enough. And then, of course, you need to provide funds for creative, innovative learning spaces at schools, but also promote this mode of learning uh, across the system. So uh, students, parents should also be informed about the fact that uh, the world has changed and they probably expect their students to be taught the same way they were taught, but the world changed and uh, we need to also accommodate for that. And a very important thing is if we want to have innovative teachers, we need to reduce teachers stress and overwork because the research suggests that if teachers are stressed and overworked, they tend to revert to traditional passive methods of learning. And it happened, for example, du during remote education in many cases where teachers just went back to lecturing which was uh, not uh, good as far as students' engagement is concerned. And the final recommendations for teacher development training institutions. Uh, first of all, if you want to uh, create workshops for teachers about active methods, try to employ active methods for doing the workshop. So uh, teachers should be allowed to experience uh, to be the object of those methods and to see firsthand how students feel when they have a say on what they are going to learn and how they are going to learn it. Uh, then you've call, uh, you need to promote peer learning about uh, among teachers. This is what uh, Xavier said, that uh, experience exchange should be um, recommended and promoted. And of course, if you are a teacher who wants to um, promote innovative and include innovative methods in your own teaching, uh, make sure you find a community which would help your professional development. There are many Facebook groups. Uh, also, we've got our Novigado Facebook group where you can find assistance in case you need it. And uh, Teacher development training institutions should 
also provide teachers, future teachers, uh, with uh, definite strategies, practical strategies of uh, active learning in fle flexible spaces, and uh, teachers should learn uh, how to use those strategies in a meaningful and purposeful way. And the conclusion is that in the world which is uh, full of unknown things, we've got pandemics, we've got climate crisis, we've got snowflake generation uh, of our students, and we've got artificial intelligence, which might be a blessing or a curse, it depends, if we think about workplaces. Uh, in the world where change is the only constant, we also need to think about changing the mode of our learning, uh, the school paradigm, uh, and students who are taught in an active way, in an innovative way, uh, they will be able to use their creativity to solve the very complex problems which our generation uh, evidently was has not been able to solve thank you